I'm fairly certain that this time we're heading into Gibraltar Carson. Let's see. Based on the guard costumes, I think that we are very much doing Cirque du Soleil and Ka. Um, and maybe some really tall things that are going to be on the field as well. So I think we have moved, uh, at least I think we were talking about how this show might have a programmatic feel to it. I think we're there. I think that's what we can expect to see from them. Um, and I, if, if this holds true to the Cirque du Soleil show, there's going to be a lot of movement and dance from the, from the color guard as well. And maybe even from the band proper. So we'll see how that turns out also. Um, finishing just a few, a few thoughts on um, what we've been talking about here about GBG Publications. Uh, mostly, we have these opportunities available for other bands, and I want to make sure that um, the, the message is clear. We're just trying to be able to allow more people to get into the realm of having this, this custom level show. And uh, we hope that you'll check that out or you'll send the right people there. And that's enough said on that. And other important thing, if you've got uh, an event in your community that is band-centric, uh, whether it's through your own high school marching band or any other sort of band event, and you think it would be something that would be valuable to have out on the internet and the World Wide Web community of band directors that focus on banddirector.com, please make sure you contact Dave Knox and let him know what's out there. That's going to be important. The stage is set, and you'll see when we get back to that camera, there's uh, several backdrops that are out here, and we definitely have a color guard in costume to do this show. So it's going to be exciting. Let's go to it.
Carlson marching one. The marching marauders are in seventh place in the 2009 Down River Fan Bear. The band would like to thank all of their parents and friends who have supported their efforts this year. Together, we are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams. Under the direction of David M. Rockington, the Carlson Marching Marauders Band is composed of 91 members. Right. So we uh, got to see the theme come to life in several ways in this show. The backdrops obviously set a nice stage, and that always helps. You know, <clears throat> backdrops are um, definitely a double-edged sword because sometimes they uh, they make the show. Sometimes they can do things you don't want them to do. When it's windy, you have to think through a lot of that very carefully. They also uh, they also can either impede or enhance your drill design. So your designer has to be on the same page and understand what you're looking for from the backdrops. You, they need to be well designed so that they stay up, they don't fall down. Um, and they have to be relevant because a lot of times people just throw them up there to throw them up there. Why is it? Um, from a practical standpoint, uh, most designers will use backdrops with a group that's a little bit smaller to shrink the stage. That's the concept. Uh, by placing on the field these backdrops around um, a perimeter, you suddenly don't have all this negative space to fill. You have a much more um, intimate performance stage. And so that's desirable in a lot of ways, depending on what you're trying to do with your concept. Um, it's, I can't stress enough though, if you see a backdrop or you think you need to do that with the performance, you really have to figure out a way to make sure they're going to be stable in all conditions. Because we're talking about the fall and or winter, if you get into uh, November and you just have a windy day, you don't want those things flying around. It's a total distraction, really impossible for you to get to communicate with your audience when they're so distracted by those things. Uh, the guard contribution in this show was, was very, um, it was very important to the thematic development. Uh, the costume is part one. We talked about that when they were coming in. Very the Komodo um, and then the first flag. If I'm remembering correctly, it was, it was very evoked the Japanese flag in my mind. So that was kind of the beginning. Um, and interestingly enough, I was speaking earlier about um, the contrast between flag designs. And that last flag that they had was uh, dark with white swirls coming out of it. And it, when they spun at the very, very end there, it was very hypnotic. It was very entrancing, and there was a lot of that visual buzz that I was talking about earlier when, when we were talking about the bands crisscrossing with their movement horizontally. That visual buzz combined with the band playing very intensely gives you the maximum amount of impact you can get out of that very last uh, statement from the band. So that's going to be exciting to see that develop and get stronger as the season goes on and the performance quality goes up just from being able to, to do it more and get more uh, solid with the conceptual, the conceptual elements along with just the basic marching, maneuvering, and playing your instrument elements. Um, a drum solo was, was interesting in the middle there and the band was doing some, some big drill moves on the side. It's another thing to consider. When you're doing the drum solo, you don't want the band to detract from the focus on the drum line, but you also don't want it to be boring to the to the person watching either. So the drum line was mostly stationary during a, a couple of the key moments in the drum solo, and the, and the winds were doing some large movements, and then the flags came in and integrated with that as well, and that was a nice uh, moment there when everything came together. <laughs> 